www.abc7.com. This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, Friday marked day three of the trial for a mother accused of killing her three-year-old son. A.J. Douglas was in court when forensic examiners confirmed some disturbing discoveries, and for the first time, the jury heard voice recordings of the mother explaining how she thinks Maddox may have been fatally injured. Friday, the state called members from the Maine State Police Crime Lab to the stand. Their testimony confirmed blood stains found on three-year-old Maddox's clothing. Blood was found on the front and back of Maddox's T-shirt, dinosaur comforter, and rectum area of his shorts. A Maine State sex crimes kit reportedly came back negative for semen. Maine State Police Detective Corporal Ryan Brockway says police had to track Trefferton down in search of answers surrounding the child's death. Members of the jury listened to a more than two-hour recording of the mother's initial interview with police. Trevelton claims the injuries Maddox suffered are a result of rough child's play among siblings and an attack from the family dog. At one point in the recorded interview, Trevelton states, Maddox came to me like that suggesting the child already had bruising prior to coming to live with her full time. Defense attorney Caitlin Smith says she is still hopeful that the jury will find Trefelton innocent. I don't think that there's been anything that shows that Jessica did any of this. Jessica's innocent, and as the evidence comes in, that will consistently um, show that. Smith claims that the state did not attempt to identify any other possible causes for Maddox's injuries. The state decided that it was Jessica pretty much the moment that Maddox entered that hospital and didn't do an investigation into anyone else or anything else. Next week, the jury is expected to hear from the medical examiner who will detail the injuries that caused Maddox's untimely death in Belfast. A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Two people are facing charges after an early morning search of a home in Bucksport. Police say during the search of the home on Route 15, they found more than 100 grams of crystal meth, almost 90 grams of suspected heroin, two handguns, and more than $2,300. 46-year-old Heather Atwood of Bucksport is being charged with six counts of aggravated trafficking in scheduled drugs, operating after suspension, violation of conditions of release, and two counts of criminal forfeiture. 44-year-old Joshua DeBoer of Bucksport is charged with possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. The Hancock County Grand Jury has indicted a Searsport woman in connection with a crash in Orland. 32-year-old Brittany Gaynor was indicted on charges of driving to endanger, leaving the scene of an accident involving bodily injury, failure to report an injury, and falsifying physical evidence. 46-year-old Travis Allen was walking in the breakdown lane on Acadia Highway in Orland in July when he was hit by a car allegedly driven by Gaynor. Allen was taken to Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Police say Gaynor initially fled the scene, but the car was found a short distance away. She was later located and arrested. Three people were also indicted in connection with a drug investigation in Hancock County. When police searched a camp along the Gus Moore Road in Penobscot, they found a pound and a half of fentanyl, more than $30,000 in suspected drug proceeds, and other evidence of drug trafficking. 34-year-old Christopher Warford of Bucksport, 37-year-old Jamie Ward of Bucksport, and 35-year-old Jessica Adams of Verona Island were all indicted on charges of aggravated drug trafficking, unlawful drug trafficking, and criminal forfeiture. The deaths of an elderly couple in Orrington have been ruled a murder-suicide. On Wednesday, authorities responded to the Orrington residents of Russell and Lois Swanson, both 89 years old, after their bodies were discovered. The Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit and Evidence Response Team were called to investigate the circumstances of their deaths. According to a release from the Maine State Police, the officer of the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Augusta has confirmed the deaths were a result of a murder-suicide. We have new information tonight regarding the body found in Lemoyne earlier this week. Lemoyne town officials have confirmed Neil Salisbury died inside the home on Shore Road, and the home is owned by his son. Salisbury was an unofficial candidate for Hancock County Sheriff. The body was discovered by a friend who stopped by the house and then contacted the sheriff's office. A Maine State Police spokesperson says the cause of death is still under investigation. 
The Maine Department of Health and Human Services has been ordered to deliver child protective case files to an oversight committee. The Office of Program Evaluation and Government Accountability, or OPEGA, received a subpoena for the case files of four children who died last year. A release states DHHS began working with OPEGA and the Office of the Attorney General to fulfill the committee's directive while ensuring the confidentiality of the records as required by state and federal laws. It says the department will complete delivery of the files today. Meanwhile, a fire broke out at a home at 456 Bennock Road in Old Town this afternoon. According to Old Town Fire Chief Adam Martell, the fire was reported at 11.15 a.m. He says firefighters were able to quickly extinguish it. Captain Martell says the fire was contained to one room and surrounding rooms only received smoke damage. The incident was accidental, but Martell did not disclose the cause of the fire. With next week being Fire Safety Week, the chief says the incident is the perfect example of why closing doors in your home can save lives. The Brewer Police Department is asking the public to be on the lookout for a missing man. 72-year-old Davis Medor was staying at the Vacation Land Inn in Brewer. He was last seen at 5 p.m. on October 6th. When the caller went to check on him at 10 a.m., he was not in his room, but all his belongings were there, including his jacket and shoes. Medora is described as a white man, 5 foot, 10 inches tall, with gray hair, a long gray beard, and blue eyes. You can see his picture there on your screen. Police say he may be wearing a faded blue shirt and blue jeans. They say Medora has cognitive issues and may be in a confused state and unable to give his name. If anyone comes in contact with him, they're asked to call 911 or 945 46 a local hospital has received a new addition to help better serve its community. The Northern Light Mayo Hospital added a new ambulance to their fleet with the help of a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. According to Regional EMS Operations Manager Chuck McMahon, the truck will make a fine addition to their fleet that's responsible for serving Maine's second largest county. We have had a really critical need for new trucks. Uh, both because of the volume that we're doing with transports has been increasing, but also the, our aging fleet and uh, just inability to fund new trucks. According to McMahon, the truck has been fitted with all the gear necessary to ensure the safety and comfort of all patients transported within it. Along with funding for the new ambulance, the hospital also received funding for a new power stretcher. McMahon says the new power stretcher will be one of the most useful tools the team will have at their disposal and will make loading and unloading patients much easier. I mean, it's imperative that they have the equipment that they need. You know, they go into difficult situations, they go to trauma situations, and they need to have everything that they possibly can for technology and the best equipment we can give them so that they can do their jobs well and help people. The president of Northern Light Mayo Hospital says it would not have been possible to secure the funding for the ambulance without the help of the USDA, and she says she's grateful to have received it. Maine's governor and congressional delegation are calling on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to provide more opportunity for lobstermen to be heard as they face even stricter regulations. The group sent a letter today to NOAA urging them to hold at least one additional in-person scoping hearing in Down East Maine as the federal agency prepares to implement phase two of its Atlantic large whale scale large whale take reduction plan which aims to reduce risk to whales by 90 percent. Fishermen and women turned out in large numbers for Wednesday's in-person hearing in Portland, expressing their opposition to the new measures, which they say will kill Maine's lobster industry. In a joint statement, the lawmakers echoed that sentiment, saying, quote, it would close off thousands of miles of prime fishing areas and require lobstermen and women to make significant changes to how they harvest the resource, including the use of ropeless fishing gear, which it is not technologically or economically viable. Given these possible outcomes, it is unacceptable that your agency is only holding one in-person meeting hours away from some of our state's largest lobster ports, forcing lobstermen to spend time off the water, which is their primary source, if not only source of income. The decision to knowingly limit opportunities to directly engage with the lobstermen in our coastal communities speaks volumes about your concern for their future." End quote. The delegation recently introduced a bill that would also prohibit federal taxpayer funds from going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which put Maine Lobster on its seafood red list. A contentious issue that we will continue to keep you up to date with. In the meantime, let's turn our attention to the outdoors and take a first look at our forecast.
All right, Peter, thank you. Your first weather is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Store, Belmont Avenue in Belfast. And all right, let's talk about football. Here we go. A lot of games tonight. Game time temperatures pretty much in the 50s with a couple of light rain showers still out there, although dying out quickly later on this evening. All right, so highs today. Look what we did again. Highs back near 70. It will not be quite this warm tomorrow. We're talking about high temperatures back in the 50s and 60s, pretty much lingering into the weekend and beyond. Lots of cloud cover out there today, even a couple more showers to get through tonight. Nothing heavy, nothing severe, but just know a couple of showers out there this evening, uh, most likely ending before midnight. And then it gets good. Back behind this system, we're in a really good spot as much cooler, drier air is lingering in uh, for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Our forecast then tonight, though, is decreasing clouds late with low temperatures down in the 40s. Your full forecast is coming up. Peter? Alrighty, Jeff, thanks so much. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, the Brewer Police Department introduces a new unit to help keep the river walk safe. And a new grant will help a local organization work towards its mission to end homelessness and domestic abuse. We'll have those stories and more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Janet Mills' education department was teaching kindergartners radical transgender policies. Now it's pushing a curriculum telling students they're racist if they use certain terms. All lives matter. Mass incarceration. Calling the police on black people. All racist. Janet Mills closed our schools and our kids fell behind. And now she's pushing her radical education agenda. No more politics in schools. No more Janet Mills. The top funder of the main Republican Party is the Republican Governors Association. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 48 months, plus save up to $1,100. If you were hurt because of exposure to the toxic water at Camp Lejeune, Congress has made it possible for you to recover a settlement. Former Marine Attorney James Beardsley wants to help you. Call now to see if you qualify. Call 222-2222. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. I'm Jay Pearl from Carroll Harper & Associates, Maine's most experienced Medicare Health Plans agency. Every day we hear how complicated navigating the Medicare maze can be. Let us help. From enrolling in Medicare to finding the right Medicare health plan, we are your go-to agency. We represent Martins Point Generations Advantage and other Medicare health plans that meet our quality standards. There's no cost or obligation for our services, so call Carol Harper & Associates today. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. I've been lobster fishing for over 25 years. These out-of-state groups that are funding Jared Golden, they're hurting us here in Maine, and Jared Golden isn't doing anything to stop them. There's the Jared Golden you see on TV, and then there's the Jared Golden that votes in Congress. He's so focused on getting elected that he's lost touch with what matters here in Maine, and we need someone to fight for us. Unless he leaves his party, there's no way Jared Golden can do anything to help Maine. I don't think Jared Golden's a bad guy, but he isn't a good congressman. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Brewer Police Department recently introduced a new unit to help keep the Riverwalk crime-free and improve relations with its citizens. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Take a stroll on Brewer's Riverwalk and you may stumble across Brewer police officers riding up and down the path. Adding bikes to their daily patrol for Officer Brandon Curtis and Sergeant Zachary Karen, the idea is to be visible and keep the area safe. We have a beautiful waterfront here in Brewer, something we're really proud of, and uh, we're always looking at better ways to patrol it and uh, keep it safe for the citizens uh, and keep the shenanigans down here at a very minimum. There are four officers that are part of the Mountain Bike Force with hopes of expanding the unit in the future. If, it, if we had a certain um, problem area, um, where we could implement the bicycles, we would absolutely use these uh, as a, I mean, it's a very useful tool. Uh, so we would absolutely um, implement these whenever needed. 
And as you can see, the Riverwalk is starting to become a little busy. And even though this is a brand new program, residents say they feel safe. Here we feel very, very safe. It's just that I could walk here by myself. I do not worry about it. But in times past, it wasn't always that way. So this is great. We applaud it. And while this spot is a heavily traveled area, VZ resident Ann Smith says she appreciates the effort the police department is putting into keeping the area safe. It's always important that, that patrons feel safe in walking. And there's a lot of elderly, there's a lot of young people that walk here, a lot of programs for the disabled come in and use this space. And I think it's crucial that they they feel comfortable, safe. Well, thank you, first of all. I mean, I appreciate that they have the, the manpower to do it. Even just a, a sporadic uh, monitoring and, and patrolling makes a huge difference in any kind of public walkway. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, a new grant will help a local organization work towards its mission to end homelessness and domestic abuse. New Hope Midcoast has been awarded a $25,000 grant from State Farm. More than 4,000 applications were considered, of which State Farm selected 200 to be voted on by the public to choose who would be awarded the grant. After 10 days, 88,000 people voted in favor of New Hope Midcoast, making them the only winner in Maine. The grant will help fund programs like the 24-7 Helpline, Legal Advocacy, and Support Groups. Great to see them getting all the support they can. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, as peak foliage season arrives, the Maine Maple Fall Fest will take place this weekend in Clifton. And in sports, Tyler Cruz will be live in Brewer to preview a busy Friday night of football matchups. We'll catch up with him right after the break. I have a great job. I get up early, head on out, and I get to work. I install solar panels. They power our homes and give me a great paycheck. When Paul LePage was governor, he opposed projects like this, putting Maine last for solar jobs in New England. He even said that climate change wasn't a threat to Maine. Look, we need more of these jobs, and that won't happen if we go back to Paul LePage. The top funder of Better Maine is the Democratic Governors Association. We're a AAA family. We found out about AAA insurance um, through a friend who had actually mentioned it a while ago. We ran the numbers, and it totally worked. We looked at the statement for our previous insurer, and then AAA insurance. Definitely, we've seen a huge difference. Switch to AAA Insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. By switching over to AAA Insurance, we saved over $450. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> In his world. <laughs> Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did yeah, it take so long? We're a AAA family now. AAA Insurance it allows us to do so much more with our kids and spend more time with them. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-209-5384 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Joe Baldacci was born, raised, and educated right here in Bangor. He's promoted and supported hundreds of millions of dollars in commercial and economic development projects. He has fought to protect vital services from drastic budget cuts. In his first term in the state Senate, Joe delivered for his constituents in Bangor and Herman on jobs, school funding, expansion of health care, and protecting the environment. Joe Baldacci, delivering results for the people of Bangor and Herman. Luna Family Auto Sales is a locally owned business run by a husband and wife team. Here at Luna Family Auto Sales, we combine our passion for cars and providing service to the community and local economy. Featuring no dock or hidden fees at all, we offer financing for all credit types and service everything we sell. Check out our website at lunafamilyautosales.com. Or come in and say hi. We'd love to meet you and introduce ourselves. Luna Family Auto Sales, 649 Stillwater Ave, Old Town. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com.
Welcome back in. Thank you for staying with us. I am here in Brewer at Historic Doyle Field for the Witches' homecoming matchup versus Falmouth. We will get into all that football stuff later. Let's talk baseball right now. The Red Sox officially wrapped up their season this week, and as tradition, front office gathered for an end-of-season press conference on Thursday. The Sox officially finished last in the AL East, 21 games out of first and under 500, 78 and 84, the final record. So by Boston standards, that's not very good at all. President and CEO of the team, Sam Kennedy, faced reporters after the season and accepted responsibility for the season while stating the obvious. They expect better. Each and every year, our goal is to play baseball in October, um, and that's on us. That's on the group that you're, you're looking at right here. Um, we're responsible for um, putting a team on the field that's built to compete into October and win a World Series championship. We obviously fell way short of that. Now that the season is all wrapped, there are a few major storylines to pay attention to this offseason. What's going on with Chris Sale? How are the Sox going to rebound? And what's going to happen with their key players, Rafael Devers, J.D. Martinez, and Xander Bogart, especially Bogarts? He is set to enter free agency this offseason, and Heim Bloom says those conversations are going to start right away. Uh, what I can say is this, that process is going to start right away uh, from our end. And obviously, you know, we know we haven't, we haven't found that path yet. Um, we still want to. Uh, we're going to work really hard at it. Big questions for the Sox heading into the offseason. Hopefully some answers in due time. Obviously, let's head up to Orono right now for some field hockey action where Maine is looking for their seventh straight victory. Mia Borley and the Black Bears hosting the University of California Bears in an America East matchup and Maine wasted no time. Just seconds into the game, Chloe Walton is going to get a shot off. It's blocked, but Teresa Holubkova is there. She sends it back to Walton, and it's one to nothing Maine. All tied up now. Cal on the move. It's Kiki de Brugne. She would fire this one past the diving Borley, and Cal would take a two to one lead. Still on the first, Maine with a penalty shot. Poppy Lambert taking it, and Poppy Lambert making it. This one was a nail biter, though. Maine would go on to win after Walton hit a game winner late in the game. Four to three is the final. And let's get to the big story, a big night of Friday night football tonight. I'm starting here in Brewer for homecoming right now. Witches and Navigators tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. A big fourth down for Brewer coming up on the Navigators 25. This game should be a really good Class B North matchup. We will check in with Skowhegan as well. Riverhawks looking to make it 6-0, and oh, a perfect 6-0. and oh. They're down in Auburn taking on Edward Little. We'll check in with some eight-man games as well. Bucksport and Mount View. Orno taking on St. John's Valley. Old Town is hosting Madison, Carabeck, and Valley. That's going to be a good one as well in a Class C D crossover. So a busy night of football, a fun night of football. You know, that's how we like it. We're not having fun if we're not busy. I got to get back to this game, though. We will have all of your updates tonight. Friday night kickoff at 10 o'clock on Fox 22. And then for week six of the Sports Splits, ABC 7 at 11 o'clock. For now, that's all for me. Let's send it to Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff? All right, thank you very much. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people, and fall is in the air. We love it. Here we are in October. The leaves are falling. We'll near peak later on this month, and overall it's going to be a nice weekend, but cooler temperatures are on the way after high temperatures near 70 today. Look at the pictures coming in. Gorgeous scenes as leaves are nearing peak about mid-month this month. So overall, get out there and take some pictures if you can. The scenery is gorgeous outside right now. All right, so we're not taking many leaves down today. The wind is out of the south right now at 12 in Bangor. Overall, we're going to shift this wind out of the west later on tonight and throughout the day tomorrow, and that will give us a good chance for some cooler temperatures coming in here. In fact, highs tomorrow are going to struggle to get out of the 50s. Are you ready for that? After we did this today, highs back up in the 70s this afternoon for parts of the area. We will not be this warm tomorrow as a cold front has come through with some showers and storms throughout the day today. Okay, so here we are. So going forward tonight, low temperatures hanging out near 40. So if you're going to the football games tonight, game time temperatures in the 50s or so, and then hanging out basically near 
40 for a low temperature. Now tomorrow, we're not going to rebound much at all as we'll have highs pretty much getting stuck in the low to mid 40s and 50s across our region. So it's going to be a much cooler day across our area tomorrow. All right, so lots of clouds out there today. A couple of sprinkles and rain showers too. Nothing heavy, nothing severe, but there are a few more of those to get through tonight uh, before they do end after midnight tonight. As here comes that system, it's a cold front, actually a couple of them. That's going to shift our winds more out of the west later on tomorrow morning and bring in those cooler temperatures, but there's nothing behind this. So that's our weekend, right? Looking really good as we have a clearer skies moving in for later Saturday and definitely into Sunday as well. All right, so speaking of rain, here's the drought monitor where it's been dry across the west for decades. Lots of problems there. For us, though, all summer long, we were kind of struggling with this, right? We could have used some rainfall, and there's still little areas here that could use some rainfall and or snowfall this time of year. However, we're entering into a dry stretch now. Uh, likely no more rain in the forecast after today until the middle portions of next week. Future cast shows the rain showers out there now kind of getting out of here tonight. Here's tomorrow morning, about 3.30 or so, nothing much going on. And then partly cloudy skies throughout the day tomorrow. We'll call it decreasing clouds throughout the day. And a very nice day, albeit cooler, with highs in the 50s tomorrow and a great day on Sunday as well. So overall, a nice looking weather weekend is on deck for us. So get out there, uh, pull the boat in if you have to do that still. All right, our forecast ends tonight. There was rain ending, low temperatures down near 40 with a southwest breeze around 5 to 10. For tomorrow, all right, you're going to feel this, right? Low temperatures in near 40 tonight, rebounding into the mid 50s for highs tomorrow under partly cloudy skies. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast by Varney Ford shows the story, right? Sunday 57, Monday 54, Tuesday 59. No real heat in the forecast anytime soon. Maybe a chance for rain getting here late Wednesday after high temperatures near 64. Peter. Alrighty, so cooling off, but lots of sunshine on the way. Love to see that. Thanks so much, Jeff, and we'll have more to come after the break. Mainers took Jared Golden at his word. But he just broke his promise. Golden was a deciding vote for Biden's newest spending bill. Even though he knew reckless spending would make inflation worse and everything more expensive. What's worse? Golden and Biden hiked taxes a billion dollars on those making less than 50000 Jared Golden. Independent when convenient. Liberal when it mattered. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. However you spend your day, spend it in style. At Label Shopper, you'll find designer brands for 30 to 70% less than department stores. With prices this low, you can grab all your favorite styles. Label Shopper, great clothes, great prices. When it comes to finding the right health insurance for your small business, it can feel like you're the only one looking out for the well-being of your team. But when you partner with a nonprofit health insurer who not only understands your needs as a business owner, but puts your people over their profits. It allows your business to keep doing what it does best with a team who can take comfort in knowing they're cared for, people over profits. Now that's a novel idea. Get a quote from your broker or visit healthoptions.org. At Home Kitchen Bath and Flooring in Dover Foxcroft are proud members of the Flooring Network here in Maine. We have our flooring installers on staff ready for you and your custom flooring project. With over 50 years of combined experience, we'll work with you from start to finish, including demo and cleanup. Backed by the Flooring Network's state-of-the-art warehouses, we have a massive inventory to provide you with the best value and fit any flooring budget you may have. So stop in, meet our flooring experts, and see what we can do to make you feel at home. Tonight, Americans bracing for another possible spike at the pump. Plus, as Ukrainian troops reclaim more territory, what's next in Putin's war? More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on all of television. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home the Kubota BX Series for zero down, 0% zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700.
Welcome back. The town of Dover Foxcroft is getting a new treat just in time for Halloween. The little shop of candy just opened on 123 East Main Street. The small store is packed to the brim with a variety of candy from toxic slime to nostalgic penny candy. The owner and only current employee, Shelly Rumsey, says she thinks the shop will make a nice addition to town and she plans on expanding at some point in the future. I hope to grow. I'm not sure what direction I want to take it, whether it be online sales or possibly making some of our own candy. I'm hoping that it's busy enough that I'll need to hire on some people. The candy shop will be open six days a week and closed on Mondays. Finally tonight, the Maine Maple Fall Festival will take place this weekend in Clifton. The Williams Family Farm will be demonstrating the ins and outs of maple syrup production. Guests can learn how sap is turned into maple syrup and enjoy some free samples along the way. Williams Family Farm co-owner Eileen Williams says the event helps bring families together for a very special time. Taking your family, going, doing family things with your, with your family. That's, that's what we enjoy about it. That's why we enjoy doing this business. All of our kids help us um, and their, their wives. Um, it's a family thing. Retail shop will also be stocked with souvenir items along with goodies and sweets. The Maple Fest will be open from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Saturday and then 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. I always really loved uh, in elementary school when we would go and uh, go to a place that did that and learn all about the maple syrup production. It's really fascinating. Uh, so hopefully an opportunity for many families to have the same experience. All right, well, that's all for tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your evening.